Okay. Good morning. I'm Greg Lemke, the chair of the Morgan Public Housing Agency Board and calling the September 22nd, 2020 meeting to order. Our meeting today is held as a video conference, 1130. No, August 25th, it's so September 22nd, I believe. Due to COVID-19, the Sorry. public may not attend in person. A uh, recording of the meeting will be posted on the City of Moorhead webpage following the meeting. There is time reserved on the agenda for citizens to be heard. If the other board members and staff would like to introduce themselves. Alexa Dixon, I'm Mike, Secretary. Michael, co-chair, vice chair, whatever it is. Shelley Dahlquist, City Council Liaison. I'm Don Bacon, I'm the Executive Director, and I have Tony Bondal, our Housing Manager, in the office with me. Okay, we have a light agenda today, which is okay. Do we have any agenda amendments? I have no amendments. Any citizens to be heard at this time? Not at this time. Okay. So our first item is the approval of minutes. I'll entertain a motion to uh, request, I request board approval of the August 25th minutes. I'll move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions, comments about the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is request approval for payment of bills. Um, only two things out of the ordinary. One would be um, our air handler unit. Our air handler unit is being replaced at the high rise, and that's in our five year plan for the capital funding grant. Um, and there's a was a twenty five thousand dollar check that went out through our capital funding grant. Um, and then we also did um, pay for um, some additional assessment for Maple Court townhomes using levy dollars um, of the concrete and the roofs. Um, and I'm working closely with um, Greg and Michael on the details of that and and also working with the city staff and Minnesota Housing Finance Agency. And so that process is kind of moving along um, and I'll be bringing further updates to the board um, when I have recommendations from that. Any questions for Don on the bills? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve. I move to pay the bills. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Let me move on to other business. The rental assistance program update. Um, this I put down as an update because I don't think it requires um, board approval. Um, but I have been in conversation for a while with um, Ottertail County, who issues the contract to us for two of our rental assistance programs that we refer to as AMSIP and BCOW. Um, these programs are nearly identical. They follow the same policy. Um, they're funded through the um, Becker Clay Ottertail Wilkin Adult Mental Health Initiative. And they focus on people with serious mental illness who are waiting for Section 8. Um, and so the Becker Clay Ottertail Wilkin Adult Mental Health Initiative gets funding through the Department of Human Services, and then they can decide who within their community they want to fund for different services and supports for people with mental illness. And Moorhead Public Housing has um, had those BCOW and um, AMSIP programs in place for a long time. Um, we also have a Bridges program that is has different funding through the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency, and that is also a very similar program. And so what's happening, which is very good news, is that Ottertail County, starting in January, is going to combine the AMSIP and BCOW programs under one contract with Moorhead Public Housing Agency. Um, the funding will remain at the same levels, um, but what this will do is it will reduce any confusion with people who use these programs because we're throwing out these different names. Um, AMSIP has actually been a, um, in place for so long that I 
am not sure what it stands for. <laughs> um, and so it's just time for a change. Um, and so we're going to be referring to that. Those two programs are going to go under one umbrella. Um, we're going to refer to them as BCOW Bridges because they essentially mirror the Bridges program. Um, but the BCOW Bridges program is again under contract with Otter Tail County and the Adult Mental Health Initiative with funding from DHS. The Bridges program is under contract directly with the state of Minnesota through the Minnesota Housing Finance Agency. So this really brings more streamlined approach for us. We can get rid of a checking account. Um, our financial statements will be more streamlined. And another benefit is um, with the way that we're funded with these two programs currently, um, we get funded up front. And then if we spend more, we could go a little over, or if we spend under, we have to pay back. And so it gives the agency better flexibility in, in managing those funds. Um, a really good example is last year, we came in just a little bit short of the grant on one end and a little bit over on the other. And had we had one pot of money, we wouldn't have had to give any money back. Um, we would have been able to make up, you know, that difference between um, with one one pot of money. And so it's just easier to work with both from um, a user perspective for the people that we serve in understanding what we're doing and why, as well as from an administrative perspective. So good news. Yeah, that sounds yeah. great. Thanks for doing that. More efficient, less confusing. More right, flexible. Right. That all sounds good. Yeah. So the Don, may, let, let me make sure that I am understanding this correctly. The funds come from two different sources, or from one source. Um, the the BCOW and AMSIP programs, which are combining into one, come from the same source. But right now they, they have two, two different contracts with two different pots of money. So those are being combined into one source under one contract. Sure. And then we have the bridges program that will remain independent of those two because it it comes from a different department. Okay. And so the the two that are being combined then the reporting then becomes one report, one financial report and and one grant report that we have to write rather than two. Correct. Can I do cartwheels then now or? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's just a win-win all around because, you know, we're not adding a whole nother word or term when we're talking to people. <laughs> We've changed the design so that with the way it was designed, people on that BCAL program um, had kind of built-in access to a Lakeland case manager. Um, to help them with housing stability. And now we've worked with Lakeland to extend that. So the people who are in both what was AMSIP and what was BCOW and what will be referred to as BCOW Bridges, all of them will have better support access as well. So it's just it's just better all around. And just my curiosity then, um, this merger was initiated at what level? I've at been, the state level? I initiated it probably a year and a half ago. And it's just been one okay. of those things that I keep bringing up and talking to people about. And um, I primarily worked with, um, so I went to the BCOW Steering Committee, which we're a member of, and then the BCOW Executive Committee oversees the Steering Committee. So it went through them. So primarily working with the county heads of of the executive committee um, with Clay County, Wilkin County, you know, those four counties. And then they also did consult with um, um, someone with, this, with the Department of Human Services that oversees the different adult mental health initiatives. And so I provided some rationale and background about what we're doing and why, um, and then they were okay with it. And so it's kind of been an ongoing um conversation that's finally you know where we're like okay we're our new contract is up in we'll start in january because it's on a calendar year with otter tail county why not have this be the year so it's finally happening good work thank you all right it looks like executive director updates are next just a few updates. Um, 
all pretty positive uh, as well. Um, the first is that um, under, under repositioning, um, we have established the Moorhead Affordable Housing LLC. So we have our certificate with the Secretary of State's office. And so this just positions us if we do have our application approved through HUD that we would be able to operate um, those scattered site units through that LLC. Um, we will be going to the city council meeting on October 12th. And so I'm currently finalizing like a council mm -hmm. communication document with city staff on that topic. Um, and the two things we're really gonna be approaching the city council about are number one, um, before we submit an application to HUD for this, we have to show that we did consultation locally um, with whatever jurisdiction we're with. So like in our case, it's the city council. When Clay County HRA did this, it was um, the Clay County Board of Commissioners. In, and then getting a letter of support from the mayor, which would be included in our application to HUD. The other piece is more unique to our enabling legislation which does specify that Moorhead Public Housing cannot um, obtain new property or release any property without city council permission. And so that's the other piece is getting city council authorization to transfer the properties from Moorhead Public Housing Agency to the LLC. Now this will be done at no cost um, and we will continue to have full control and ownership over the LLC, but I am putting language in there about that just to really be clear about the fact that we're changing property. Um, and so that's on October 12th. And then we're also, we've just been really busy making improvements to the scattered site locations just to put them in a good position for the repositioning. Um, so shingling is happening on a number of locations as I speak. And then we just finished a number of internal inspections um, where we're identifying you know, new refrigerators, flooring, those kinds of things. Any questions on repositioning? I just have a couple other brief updates, but. Um, the June and July financials were included um, out to the board um, and the board packet also includes like a budget report summary um, for both the year end um, performance um, for June as well as the first month of the new fiscal year in July. Um, and I really won't say much more because um, the year end report um, was basically finalized and it did fit with what our projections were and the previous reports I've given to the board. Um, they will be audited in late October. And so we're preparing for that audit right now. And then lastly, just to say um, the community garden by Riverview Heights High Rise, um, we harvested 890 pounds of um, you know, produce this year, which was a really big year. I think last year was somewhere around 600 pounds. Um, and we are working to basically double the garden for next year. Um, and we're getting funding through um, Concordia College operates the Resilience Task Force and they have funding through the Bush Foundation. And so we are getting funding to put new fencing in and put a sign in. Um, and we're working with the garden coordinator and some other people on, on that right now. So looking forward to gardening next year, hopefully without so many precautions about COVID. That was a challenge this year, but we did, we're able to garden, so. Anything those else? Those are my updates. No, those are my updates. Okay. Well, it's all good. <laughs> it's good in short meetings. They do this more often. But anybody else have anything for Don or nothing? All right. There's no attorney's report. So the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.